Hey everybody, welcome back to our studio, Ethereal Arts Studio, where I'm an artist, you're an artist, we are all artists. Today's video is based on the definitive fantasy film, The Neverending Story, released in 1984 and directed by Wolfgang Peterson. The colors that we will be using are blue, white, red, golden yellow, black, and green. Let's start by mixing some white and blue to make the color of the sky. I'm using a one and one half inch flat brush to apply this color swerving, brushing, sweeping from side to side. When we get to about this point, almost halfway, we can add white by itself. We don't have to wash the brush. We simply add the white and blend it by going side to side over and over again until it blends and makes a softer blue. And let's continue to add more white. We can wash the brush, dry it really well, and then add more white so that this midsection of the painting can be very, very light and ready for the next color. Now I'm going to wash my brush really well, hitting the bottom of the cup over and over again and then drying it really, really well so that it doesn't drip. Then I'm gonna go for that golden yellow and add it where I left off, mixing it, blending it very well with the white by going over it over and over again many, many times until it blends and makes a soft transition. So now let's start getting a little whimsical, a little, a little more colorful. Let's add some red. We don't have to wash the brush at all or anything. We simply pick up a little bit and then just brush it on, blend it in. Make that sky more magical, more colorful, and just altogether more beautiful. We blend it by going over it many, many times as we did before. We let this wondrous scene come to life. So now I want to paint some clouds up here, some soft clouds. Here I have a brush that's not too sharp. It's been used. It's not like this one that's very sharp. It's uh, kind of bushy and uh, used. So I wash it very well, dry it very well. Then I'm going to use some blue, some of that blue sky, sky blue mixture I had. I'll add a little bit of more white to it. A little bit of red too, to kind of make it a little bit more purple, a little bit purplish. Then I'm gonna do a trick. I'm gonna wipe off most of the paint with a, with a paper towel or a napkin. Then since it has very little paint, I can softly add some clouds on the right side. And these clouds now are very gentle, very soft. And I just wanted to do that so that I can then get comfortable with adding some of them. Then I can add more. Then I can go for more paint and add more clouds, whether I wipe it off with a paper towel or not, I get more comfortable. Now the scene in front of the ivory tower is one of many wondrous sequences in the film, which surely take us to another world and make us believe. So I hope that you're, st well, I know that you're still with me. Let's wash our brush now. Let's wash our brushes and dry them really well. Let's mix some red and some of that gold and yellow. And then we can wipe off most of the paint as we did. And let's add some soft clouds in that orange part as well. I'm even going to add some of that uh, red and orange light hitting some of these clouds up here.
Okay, so now let's make some of the color for the background. Let's use the mixture that we have going on here, that we use for the soft clouds. Let's add some white to it, a little bit, tiny bit of black too. And we're gonna try to go for a gray purple that is very light for the background. And while I do that, I wanted to discuss a little bit about the film like I always do. So about the film, like many of the movies that I draw or paint about, it's tightly attached to my upbringing. I clearly remember 1988, or when I was about five years old, watching it with my brothers and sisters. <laughs> we watched so many movies, some that we weren't supposed to. But it was just magical and astounding. Noah Hathaway was exceptional, as was everyone else. And the visuals were just out of this world. Okay, so now I'm gonna use a three-fourths of an inch flat brush. This time it is pretty sharp. And I'm gonna mix that mixture that I used for the background. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna add blue to it and also a little bit of red, a little bit of white, and a little bit of black to it. Maybe a little bit more black because I want it to be darker than what I used for the background. So here's a little bit more black. I want it to be darker and stand and stand out against that background. Okay, and now for the sun. I have a number 12 flat brush. I'm mixing white and some of my yellow to make a light yellow, very light, that I use to make a circle by pressing firmly on the canvas and just twirling the brush around until it makes a circle without picking it up yet. Then once it makes a circle, I pick it up. We could actually put that yellow to use. Let's add a little bit of red in there to mix mix it and make kind of like a light orange color. We could use, uh, I'm using my same number 12 brush and I wipe off the paint so that it has very little paint in it, that trick again. Then I add a little bit of light hitting those clouds up there. Okay, so we can continue to use that yellow. Let's add a lake or a river adjacent to the ivory tower. Kind of like a zigzag form. Now let's go for an even lighter yellow, so more white. Make it even lighter. And this is for the ivory tower itself. It's emitting a lot of light from that center. Okay, 
so now let's go for some green. Let's go for a bigger brush too. So I'm going to go back to my three-fourths of an inch flat brush. I washed it and dried it really well. Then I take some green by itself and then just make some of these hilltops on both sides. Now back to my number 12 flat, I washed it and dried it really well. I add some white to that mixture that I used to paint the ivory tower, that dark gray. I add some white to it so that it can be a lighter version of the same color. And that's what I'm going to use. Uh, we'll add a little blue here too, make it more bluish. With that mixture, we can actually make some of the, de some of the details on the ivory tower. Here I'm going to add a little bit of black paint to the green paint to make a darker green, a forest green that I'm going to use with my number 12 flat brush to add some trees that are dark on the green that I had added previously. I just dabbed them on to add some trees. We can add some definition to the trees a little bit later. Let's use some white paint for the spire in the center of the ivory tower. If you have a detail brush, use it. I'm going to use mine to add yellow, 
bright yellow to indicate lights that are far away that you can see that belong to the houses or the dwellings, the people in Fantasia. at this point that you can go back to your painting and add any fine details that you want to add. So for example, you could take a detail brush and make the trees more defined, add more leaves or limbs, make those leaves more realistic, make those trees more lifelike. Or you can add more light to the ivory tower, make the center of it, that long spire, more bright by simply adding white to it. We can also add some faded green by wiping off green paint off a brush and just dabbing on some far away vegetation. You can make any detail brighter, doubling up on paint on any detail to make it stronger. Make Fantasia yours and add any detail that you wish. Paint Falcor in the sky carrying a Treyu or Bastion or paint Nighthawk on his back in the sky. Well, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I wish I could see your paintings and how they came out. Either way, check us out at etherealartsstudio.com. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Join our team and hit the notification button.